Take a look at these dishes. Whether you live in the Caribbean, or visited the region, or simply been to a restaurant serving Caribbean cuisine, you've probably tasted one or more of these dishes. Many of them and the culture that they represent have been popularized the world over. Here's a Caribbean fusion restaurant in Canada. Here's one of many in the United States. Here's one in Germany. Here's one even in Hong Kong. This style of cuisine has become synonymous with the laid back, fun in the sun lifestyle of the Caribbean. But it wasn't always so. In fact, some of the ingredients in the very food we eat today have a much darker history to them than what meets the eye. What you'll find out is that this is what you get from cultures from all over the world over a span of centuries of adding their own ingredients into the pot, making what we call today Caribbean cuisine. Imagine the Caribbean as an empty clay pot for now. Watch and see how different cultures start to add to that pot. When you look at many of the fruits that have been most synonymous with the Caribbean, such as breadfruit, mangoes, and sugarcane, we automatically think these fruits originated from the Caribbean, right? But the truth is, they're not. You have the European settlers to thank for that, as the Spanish, French, and English introduced many of these fruits and ingredients from other places. So the next question you might be asking, if breadfruit, mangoes, and sugarcane aren't Caribbean in origin, then what is? That would be the yams, papayas, guavas, and cassava scattered around the archipelago. This was the diet of the first true settlers of the Caribbean, the Carib, Arawak, and Taino tribes that came from South and Central America. And when it comes to the seasoning of meats and fish, the Caribs introduced various spices to their recipes. After the Amerindians and Europeans' contribution to this pot came the Africans through the Atlantic slave trade, and this is where things started to get a little dark with regards to food. You see, for the Africans, blending different unfamiliar ingredients into their recipes wasn't a matter of delicacy. It was often essential to their survival. A slave's diet in those days mostly consisted of the foods that their slave masters didn't want to eat themselves, so they had to get creative. They blended their traditional African foods with the staple foods they found on the islands, introducing things such as okra, kalaloo, saltfish, and ake into the mix. You could say that they were the ones who actually started to stir this Caribbean pot of foods together, making it closer to the familiar recipes we see today. Next would be the Chinese and Indian indentured laborers who would come and introduce such ingredients as rice and curry, and sailors who moved back and forth through the Americas to a lesser extent brought in the ingredients they got there as well, like corn, beans, potatoes, and tomatoes, making the pot of Caribbean cuisine we know and love today. You might wonder, if each island developed their cuisine individually, how did they all develop generally the same Caribbean fusion taste? Well, actually, they kind of didn't, and did at the same time. As each island developed their own cuisine, they ended up with some very unique dishes, almost exclusive to their respective islands, and in some cases becoming that island's national dish, such as ackee and saltfish in Jamaica, and green fig and saltfish in St. Lucia. But there are also some dishes, as a result of many of the same ingredients being accessible in each island, recipes such as cook-up or pelau, as it's called in some parts, became common throughout the region. And we can't talk about Caribbean food without mentioning the seasoning. Seasoning, which in the Caribbean is a green herb and oil-based marinade, is actually quintessential to its flavor and is used in just about every island in the region as a result given this part of the world its distinct character. One thing is for certain, Caribbean cuisine is a clear example of what can happen when a region becomes one of the crossroads of the world. Had the Atlantic trade winds not been there to carry the many different cultures from around the world through this region, we wouldn't have this amazing amalgamation of cultures to celebrate today. In fact, Caribbean cuisine actually stands as a testament to the diversity of the region that we celebrate. When we eat our favorite local dish as Caribbean people, we're eating what represents a mirror of who we are. Not as Amerindians or Europeans or Africans or even Asians, but as Caribbean people, a melting pot of cultures.